every day is a great day, especially if we get to trade, which means the weekends are kind of boring, aren't they? Strange thing to say. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, where we like to look at hot penny stocks. You see, I'm a day trader. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And while I'm out there trading, I'm looking for a hot penny stock a stock that has potential to make us money. Well, today we are not going to focus in on a hot penny stock. We're going to focus in on some hot information that is going to help you increase your success rate with your trades. Folks, as far as I'm concerned, it's not about how much money you're taking. It's how often you're taking that money. I think it's a heck of a lot easier to get five 20% winners than it is to get 100% winner. Now, supports and resistances you probably know a little bit about them, maybe a lot, maybe nothing. Well, folks, I'm telling you what, this is the key fundamental structure for any trade plan. If you don't have supports and resistances drawn on your chart, you have no business getting into a trade. These supports and resistances, S and R's, they give us all the information, all the numbers we're looking for, for our trade. You will get a number, a price for your entry, a price for your exit, you will get a price for your stop loss and you'll know exactly how much money you're going to gain or lose if the trade goes sour. So now you know your risk and reward ratio. Now we've got a plan and you get all that information from those simple horizontal lines on our chart. So what we're going to do is go draw some up on the charts. You ready? Let's jump into it. So we're going to take a look at some supports and resistances now, and we're going to use my free trading platform, the only trading platform I got, Think or Swim. But of course, I'm sure this is going to work on whatever trading platform you've got. I'm sure they all give you the ability to draw horizontal lines on your charts. So I'm not going to belabor this issue. We're just going to cover three charts. I've got three stocks chosen here, not for any particular reason. We're really not concerned with the companies. We're not looking at the charts for breakouts. We're just looking at the charts for supports and resistances, and these are going to be good to work with. We don't even have to concern ourselves with the oscillators. So the first chart I've got up here, I've already got my supports and resistances drawn up the way I would have them. So let's say this is one of the stocks you like. You want to get into it. Great. First thing you have got to do if you're going to get into a stock is to have supports and resistances so that you can determine where you get in, where you get out, where your stop loss is going to be. Now you can draw SNRs anywhere. That is to say on the four hour chart, the one hour chart, the five minute chart, you can draw supports and resistances on any chart whichever is most convenient to you. Now, I like to use the bigger charts because I get a longer picture. I can get a lot of supports and resistance all the way back there. But the problem is the less bars you have, the less accurate your supports and resistances will be. So if you come down to the 15 minute, you got a lot of bars. So your SNRs are gonna be pretty accurate. But here's the thing, they don't have to be on the money. They just need to be in the zone. Kind of like the white lines going down the road. You've got all this leeway in between them. As long as you're in between them anywhere, you're okay. And that's what we're looking at here. We got leeway on both sides of these supports and resistances. So what we're looking for is where the price likes to return to over and over. Where it goes and stops. Like say $3. The price is at $2.90, it goes to $3.00. Falls down to 280, comes back to three bucks, down to 295, back to three bucks. Then it gets over three bucks, goes to 310, down to three bucks, up to three and a quarter, down to three bucks. Looks like it likes three bucks. So that becomes a support and resistance to us, a price it keeps coming back to, like a favorite vacation. We look for these, we look for the butts of the bars, the butts of the wicks, and we look for straight lines and we put a line over top of it so that we can see it. Now, the price doesn't need the lines so that it can move. This is for us. We put these in there, we can see the ladder, the price is gonna climb up or climb down, which gives us information on how this stock is gonna move. So let's start grabbing up some SNRs right now. I'm looking for straight lines. All right, I've got one right here and I'll tell you why I got it. You can see it's tapped right there. It's tapped right there. 
it's underneath it here and there's a whole bunch sitting on it. So this is a fairly strong, not real strong SNR. Now what makes it strong? The more price points on it. If you have a whole bunch of price points on it, that's a real strong SNR. If you just have a couple, it's a soft SNR. Grab another one here. I see we've got one down here. Now I see this because you see this is bouncing up to it. You see all of this is sitting on top of it. And then we got one bump right there. Now these are being carried all the way over for me. So even though I'm grabbing them back here, believe me, they are still valid over here. And to make sure they keep going with me as the chart progresses, I put extend to the right. So it's always moving as the chart is moving. Let's grab another one here. Looks like we've got one right about this region. You can see all of this here is bouncing on it right there. And here, it's coming up underneath. If you can get prices hitting that line on both sides, that's a very prominent SNR. All right, now to get the rest, I'm gonna get a little bit closer. You can always zoom in so you can be more accurate here. Looks like we've got another one right about in this vicinity. I see her hitting her head up against it here. All of this is sitting on top of it. Let's grab another one right there. You can see all of this is sitting on top of it. And then we've definitely got one down in this region. All right, so now we have got our SNRs, our supports and resistances. Supports and resistances are gonna be the ladder that the price is gonna climb up or down. Right now, our price is at 66 cents. We are right up underneath this SNR of about 70 cents, let's say. It looks like it's closer to 71, but let's call it 70. So we're at 66 cents. We are right up underneath it. When we are underneath one of these lines, it's a resistance because we got to break through it, like the ceiling. You can't get to the next floor unless you punch through that ceiling. So when it comes up to it, we expect it to hit its head and pause, stutter, maybe even fall. When she finally breaks through, tapping that underneath a few times, she finally breaks through the floor and gets up on top. She's then going to put all those boards back down and start hammering. Boom, boom, boom. She's going to bounce up and down on the top up there. Once she bounces up and down, she'll start to push up. At that point, we know she's ready to climb. She's pushing towards the next resistance. Now we have got information about how the stock moves. She slows down when she's underneath and she speeds up when she's on top. Think of this as an expressway. Underneath is your exit and on top is your on-ramp. When you get on top of this and you see she's starting to move, that's your entry. You want to get in not on the support and resistance, 71, because it could go up, it could go down. Who knows? But when she goes a little bit above it, she's at 70, maybe she hits 72. She's showing you. She's giving you confirmation she's moving up. That's when you get in. Just a little bit above the support. Then it starts to climb, gets on its ladder, gets up there. As soon as it's approaching that resistance, what's going to happen? It's going to bump her head. It's going to slow down. It's going to stutter. It could fall back. This is an exit. This is where you may want to get out. So now we know where we need to get in and out. We have our resistances that tell us if I get in at 72 and ride this up to the next one at 90, if I get out just a little bit before 90, 88 cents, there's a very strong likelihood that I'm going to get that. Now, what if she continues going? Well, first off, there's no rule that says you have to sell everything. It's not an all or nothing decision. When you start climbing, take some gains. When she comes under this resistance, maybe take 25, 30%. Sell 25, 30% of what you have. Put that money in your pocket. Let the rest stay in the market. If she continues to climb, you're taking gains. If she starts to fall, you can get out quick and you've got gains before she started to fall. So we have an on-ramp on top of these supports. This is where you want to get in, just a little bit above them. And when she comes up to one of these resistances, that's a choice, a time to get off the expressway. You never take a trip without knowing what entrance ramp you're getting on and what exit you're getting off on the expressway. 
Same thing, folks. You need to know where you're getting in and where you're getting out. You don't have to sell everything, but take something. And if she gets through this resistance and gets on top and looks like she's going to start climbing, once she gets close to this next one, sell some more. If you sold 20% back here, you got 80% left. Well, when she gets this far, maybe sell half of what you have left. That would be 40%. Grab those gains, put them in your pocket. Chances are you have now got back all the money you've put in. So now you're working with free shares. And as it starts to climb, you look at the next resistance to be your point of stuttering and stopping. But if she doesn't get up on top of here, she keeps butting her head and starts to pull back, you know she's probably going to fall back to this one here. So I like to sell on the rise and not wait to be encouraged to sell when she starts to fall. Now we've got our entries, we've got our exits. Those are two prices you can choose and you can calculate. I'm gonna make this much money. What's left? How much money am I risking? So now we gotta get our stop loss and we get it from these as well. Now I'm not gonna ignore our SMAs, our simple moving averages. Our moving averages are important, they too our supports and resistances. They're moving supports and resistances that we always have to take into regard. But I'm not focused in on those right now. But if you could get the price on top of a resistance and on top of a 200, you've got extra strength building up there. You're in a very strong position. So now we need a stop loss. How much are you willing to lose? Well, I'm willing to drop a dime. That's not good enough. Well, 20 cents? No, I don't mean that. I mean, you can't just use an indiscriminate number. You have to use an exact number, and we get that number by looking at our supports and resistances. We are above 60 here. We are up here at 66. We want it to break out there, right? She could fall back down and hit this one, and she could bounce then, bounce back up. But what if she comes underneath? Uh-oh. Chances are she's going to fall all the way down there. But if you put your stop loss at the mark, 60 cents, all she has to do is drop to it and bounce and you're out. So we can't put it there. And if she has a habit at any time of just coming under it a little bit, you know, it's at 60. What if she comes down to 58? She has a habit of just coming under it like a ball in water. Rubber ball goes underwater, shoots right back up. That happens a lot bear's trap. You think it's falling and it turns right around and comes back. Don't get stuck. So what we do is we find our resistance and then come down a couple points, whatever it may be, a couple pennies, a couple nickels, whatever, come down lower than where she would normally dip. You want to get out of her static range. If she has a habit of coming down two cents and then coming up, go down three cents. You want to be underneath where she normally bounces. You want to be at where she breaks down. You want to be at that point that if it hits this point, I don't think she's coming back. That's where you want to get out. And this is a guaranteed sale no matter if you're around or not. It's automatically going to happen. Now, I shouldn't use the word guaranteed because if the market falls really, really fast, it could zoom right by you so fast that it doesn't happen. And you could be caught. So don't think it's a 100% your stop losses. It isn't. So that's one chart. Let's look at another chart here, folks. Now I'm willing to bet that chart looks awfully familiar to you. I don't doubt it. We see a lot of six-month downtrending stocks. But these are one of the easiest charts to get our supports and resistances in because we don't have to do a lot of work. All you really have to do is underline each step going downhill. Every step is a support and resistance. And they pretty much stand out. There's not a lot of work involved of finding these. Now, there are resistances and supports that aren't steps. We got one up here. Pretty easy to see. All of this came down to it hard. Sitting on it solid. Came up and bounced on it right there. Now, you may find that some of your supports and resistances are too far spread. And it's like, well, gee whiz, I don't know what to do here. Where, where do I grab one? Well, you could work that out. But normally... You can just go right to the center, dead center of it, and that is going to be a soft resistance for you. Just a general rule, find the center if it's a very big gap between the resistances and supports and just put a line in there. So now 
We have all of our supports and resistances that we need. We have them above our price and below our price. So we can set up our trade plan. So our price right now is at 95 cents falling down to our support of 90 cents. Now, yes, the price is above that support. And I say we want to buy when we're above the support, but that's presuming it's climbing. We don't want to get in when it's falling because God only knows what it's going to do. We're hoping it's going to bounce off of that 90 support and start climbing again. But if it comes underneath, she could come back up, but there's a stronger likelihood she could continue falling all the way down to the next support, which here is 79 cents. Now, if she does bounce and she starts coming up, our next resistance is at a buck three. This would be a consideration to get out, but I'll be honest, with that 200-day SMA just on the other side of that resistance support line, no way I'm getting out here. She gets on top of this one, she has a strong possibility of breaking out and running hard. So, the supports and resistances give us structure, but all the rest of the chart gives us insights. They all do work together, but... Without your supports and resistances, you're trading in the dark, folks. So we've got our information we need here. If we can bounce off of this 90 and start climbing, we would probably want to buy in a few pennies above 90, about 93 cents. When we get up to the next resistance, we want to sell a few pennies underneath. It may pull back before it gets to it. And our stop loss. Well, if we're going to buy in here at 93, our support's at 90. We want to come up underneath that. Here is our 50 day at 88. You wouldn't want to put it there. It could easily bounce off of that 50. And looking over here, I see she does fall through it and bounce back. She came all the way down to 86 here. But she came back and then she fell. So it looks like if you go beyond 86, you're in the down zone. So I might put in 86, 87 somewhere around there as my stop loss. You don't want to get stop lost out. You want to put these stop losses at points where you feel she's not going to come back. This would be a scary point and I would sell all the time if she fell to here. So that's what we're looking at here. We've got all of our information and a breakout setup. So I do have my ideas of where I'm going to get out, but it all depends on what she does with this 200 in this particular case. All right, let's take a look at one more here, folks. This was a stock I was looking at on Friday. She's got a cup and handle forming right now. She is in a serious downtrend, and these downtrends can be real easy to draw your supports and resistances on. You just look for straight lines like right here. I'm not going to draw any here because I've got all I need right in this vicinity right here. So let's zoom in on this. So again, this is what I would be working with before I got into a trade. I would have all of these set up. Let's take them all away. Bye-bye. There you go. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the ones I can see with my naked eye. Right there, you can see here she bumped her head. She's bouncing on it right here. And she fell away from it right there. That's a very, very important one. Let's see if we can get another one up top without having to go too far back. Looks like we could get one right there. You can see right here she's dropping on it. Here we had a solid bar. Poked it there, bouncing up to it here, bouncing up to it there. So that's not a very strong one, but it is one. The rest of these I can probably grab with my Fibonacci, right? So we're going to grab my Fib. We're going to come up now. Normally, I'll be honest, I'm going to stay here. I don't want to go all the way up here because we had a break. She fell and then she climbed right here and then she fell here. I like to stick with one solid surge or solid drop for my Fibonacci. But you can try it either way, you know. So I'm going to drop it right here at the top, bring it down to the bottom. Uh, I'm actually going to go to the bottom bubble here. So now we've got some supports and resistances. I think I've got one more here in the middle. We sure do right there. What I see here is all these bars sitting on top of it right there. And we had one bounce there. And she's kind of in the center of this break there. So that's going to be a soft one, but it will be one. So everything is set up here. We have got supports and resistances. Our price is currently 74 cents. 
we have a resistance at 74.39 from our Fibonacci at the 50% mark. So I would like this one. She is just pushing up on top of it. She is at 74 cents roughly. So, you know, I might look at 75, 76 cents. I want to be above it. I want to make sure she's pushing away from it. My next resistance is pretty close though. It's only 81 cents, but no one says I have to get out there. I just watch for a stutter there and it's pretty weak. That's why it's, you know, it's so close. Then we've got another one up here at 90. When she gets close to 90, I may be considering getting out. If I got in at 72 cents, I may want to get out at 88 cents. You want to come just in under these. You don't want to be on it because what if she stops just shy of it? A lot of these stocks will come up to it and then get scared. Won't even touch the ceiling and start to fall. So I like to come in just underneath them when I'm selling and I want to be just over them when I get in. And then I calculate my price. Where do I plan on getting out? Well, I'm getting in here at 75. I'm going to get out here at 88. That gives me a 13 cent per share. I got a thousand shares. Boom. That's how much money I'm going to make. Now, where would I get out if she starts to fall? Well, I'm at 70 cents. I got all my SMAs coming up right now. So it's looking pretty strong, but in either case, I would probably come underneath 67 cents, which is our resistance our support, I'd come in at 65, two cents underneath it. Because if she dips underneath it and comes back up, you just got thrown out of this and it's probably going to run after dipping underneath. What does a rubber ball do when it goes in the water? It goes under and it doesn't just come up and lay on the top. No, it shoots out of the water. What does a cat do when it wants to jump way up there? It crouches just a couple inches, a couple inches, and boom, it's off and running. So a lot of times you'll see a stock just come underneath the resistance, crouching before the pounce. And you don't want to have your stop loss too close to that crouch zone. So come down a little bit underneath where if it went down that low, you would want to sell because it looks like it's going to crash. So we put our stop losses outside of the zone that it bounces, the static zone. We want to buy above these lines, sell below the lines, not at the lines, above them and below them. And you want your stop loss below. Now with those three numbers, you can calculate how much money you're going to make. The most you're going to lose. If you're going to lose $7 and possibly make $57, that's a good risk to reward ratio. But if you're going to lose $25 and you're only going to make 19, you better work on that one. Not a good strategy. Find a better play. Folks, supports and resistances may be basic, may be one plus one, but folks, you can't do anything without them. They tell you all the rest of the information. They are the lens on the picture. Focus in on your supports and resistances and you can see your trades. I promise you folks, when you know when you're getting in and when you're getting out, you're going to feel more comfortable, more in control. You're going to feel like a master of your destiny. You are because you know what you're going to do when something happens. You're not going to be guessing. Folks, it is all about information. The more you know about that price and how it moves, the more you can predict where it's going to go so that you can do what you need to do. It's not how much you take, it's how often you take it. Grab these gains between strong resistances and supports and do it over and over and over again. And watch your piggy bank get so fat it just breaks. Hope this helps, folks. It could have been a little confusing. It could have been a little more put together, but I think you get the point. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.